Welcome to our Easter sunrise service. It's great to see everyone out this morning. Thank you so thank you so much for being here. It is a beautiful uh, sunny sunny morning in Bridesburg. <laughs> Please join me in the call to worship. Hallelujah! The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We will sing our first hymn, number 233, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Uh, let's sing the first two. Christ the Lord is risen today, hallelujah. Mortal tongues and angels say, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs high, hallelujah. Sing glad hymns and earth reply, hallelujah. Let the victor's people sing, hallelujah. Where, O oh, death, is now your sting, hallelujah. Dying once, Christ lives to save. Hallelujah. Where's your victory, O grave? Hallelujah. Please, please join me in the prayer of invocation. We rejoice, mighty God that you have raised Jesus Christ from the dead. We praise you and glorify your name. New life blossoms where dead hopes were buried. Today the world is made new. Be known among us in resurrection power through Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. Uh, my chair is sinking into the ground, so I'm going to make a temporary adjustment here probably not for the first time probably not for the last time i should say would any uh would anyone like to uh read the gospel okay Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni. Thank you for thank you for reading. Please join in our next hymn, number two thirty seven. I come to the garden alone. Uh, we'll sing the first and last verses one and three. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, None other has ever known. Verse 3, I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe. The voice to me is calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Uh, we, we, we come now to our time of uh, prayer. Uh, any, any prayer requests? sister we'll keep uh keep alan's sister donna in prayer please pray for millie from our congregation uh she's had a number of health setbacks in the last uh in the last uh, month or so and uh she uh had a fall uh last night and she has a number of other health problems so she's in a really fragile place so please pray please pray for millie and Engelhart. and Engelhart. Still needs the prayers. Okay, so we. And also my husband. And your husband. Let us pray. Eternal, e eternal God. You roll away the stone of grief from our lives, where we see only. Hopes that have died, you bring about new possibilities. Where we see only pain and death, you bring about new life. And so we come here to give thanks for your son, for his resurrection, for opening the door to eternal life to all of us who believe. We pray that you would be with all who have passed from this life uh, from for, from all who have passed from COVID and from other causes. Eternal rest grant them, Lord, and light perpetual shine upon them. We know that as you raise Jesus, that you have granted them eternal life as well, and they are with you in that place where there is love and light. We pray for those who are struggling with illness of body or mind. We pray for Anne Engelhart and for Liz's husband. We pray for Alan's sister, Donna. We pray for our sister, Millie. 
surround them with your love lay strengthen strengthen them send your send your strengthening and healing angels uh, surround them with your love help them to know that you will never leave them nor forsake them nor will you ever leave nor forsake us all these things we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Offering didn't, uh, I didn't, didn't bring a plate out here. I guess we, we can drop off our offerings on, on the way out, on the, inside on the way out. So, but we can still sing. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A 2013 article in USA Today tells of the Reverend Willie Lyle, who was newly appointed to the Sango United Methodist Church of Clarksville, Tennessee. I think the rooster's preaching the gospel, <laughs> at least as well as I am, but that's okay. We, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are glad for, we are glad for that rooster to, to wake us up this morning. In the weeks leading up to his first service at his new appointment at Sango, Reverend Lyle was wakened by a dream. He said God appeared to him and told him to experience the life of a homeless person before starting his new ministry. He heard God telling him that God wanted him to experience firsthand before going into this new assignment what it was like to have nothing. No money, no food, no roof over his head. God wanted Reverend Lyle not only to preach the word in his, in his new appointment, but to live it. So for five days, from, from June 17th through June 21st of that year, Monday through Friday, Reverend Lyle lived on the streets of Clarksville. During that time, he learned about the various ministries in the city that fed or offered shower facilities or otherwise helped the homeless. He learned from other homeless people where to sleep so as not to be arrested. He learned who to trust and who not to trust. And as you can imagine, he learned in a big way how unkind people can be to the homeless. On his first Sunday at his new appointment at Sango, he laid down under a tree on, on the lawn on church property, covered in an old overcoat with a hat over his face, still unshaven. And some people, about 20, ab approached him and offered assistance, at least inviting him to come in, to come inside the comfortable air-conditioned church. Again, it was summer and it was hot. Now, on this, fir on this day, on, on this day, the first day of his uh, new pastor, about 200 people gathered to meet their new pastor, so roughly 90% of them had ignored the apparently homeless man on the church lawn on their way up the church steps. He walked in and sat, sat in a pew near the front of the church. I, I'd imagine some of those, as he was walking up the aisle, where they're probably shaking their heads like, uh. <laughs> And then... And then in his, in his scruffy state, Reverend Lyle came forward to lead worship. And as he preached, his daughter and his daughter-in-law combed his hair and shaved off his beard, the, the, the five days beard that, that, that had grown. And he shared with the congregation what he had learned from his five days on the street and his vision for, the, for his congregation's ministry in the community. On that June morning, a congregation had gathered in anticipation of meeting their new spiritual leader. But only a handful had, had met him previously. He was unknown to the rest of the congregation. They likely expected their new pastor to show up looking his clerical best, decked out in a robe and collar and stole, 
dressed to impress his new flock. But Reverend Lyle showed up packaged much, much different from what, what his flock expected, though he most certainly made an impression. What we can learn is that our expectations can affect our vision, our physical ability to ex recognize reality as it is, and our spiritual vision as well. In our gospel reading, the disciples had expectations, though they, weren't look, though they weren't much to look forward to. Their master and teacher had been condemned by the religious, religious establishment and executed by the Roman imperial state. Joseph of Arimathea had offered his tomb as a resting place for Jesus. We're told that on that first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went expecting to see a sealed tomb. What she found was a tomb that was open and empty. Mary ran to, tell Je ran to tell Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, who we later learned was the writer of John's Gospel. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him, Mary told them. Peter and the beloved disciple ran, ran to the tomb, the beloved disciple getting there first, but Peter being the first to look in and see the empty grave clothes. They went back home, but Mary stood outside the, the empty tomb weeping. Two angels asked why she was crying, and she said, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they've laid him. Then Jesus himself asked her the same question, and then asked, Whom do you seek? But Mary did not recognize him, but thought that perhaps he was the gardener. It was not until Jesus called her name that Mary recognized the risen Christ. As I read this passage every Easter, there are a couple of phrases that always grab my attention, always tug at my heart and my mind. Jesus asked Mary, Whom do you seek? And Mary said, They have taken away my Lord. As individuals, as, as a congregation, as a community, as a country, we've been through so much these past two years. COVID claiming nearly a, mer a million American lives and leaving millions more with lifelong disease and disability. Political division so sharp that half the country can't even talk to the other half. A wide and growing economic divide between a fantastically wealthy few and the rest of us that are at one level or another just getting by from paycheck to paycheck. If we're fortunate enough to have a paycheck, and many aren't plus all of the individual and family crises and tragedies that life deals us. To quote Thomas Paine, these are the times that try men's and women's souls. And many who have lived in, in comfort and perhaps complacency and assumed that God would protect them from all harm have experienced rude awakenings these past two years and in response have said, why did God let this happen to me? I thought God was supposed to protect me, protect, supposed to protect us. I go to church, I, so I held up my end. Where is God? And many lose their faith. Though they may use different words, the message boils down to, they have taken away my Lord. Well, they, whoever they are, haven't. They haven't taken away our Lord. Mary thought someone had taken away her Lord, but she learned otherwise. Her Lord was right in front of her, just not in the way she expected. Not a dead body, but a risen Christ. Likewise, the tragedies, global, national, and local, of these past difficult years have not taken away our Lord. The risen Christ is still with us. It is our expectations that hide him from our eyes. In his circumstances, Thomas Paine spoke of the summer soldier and the sunshine patriot whom in, in time of crisis would cut and run. And likewise, a summer faith, a, su a sunshine spirituality may not go the distance. As, Christian, as Christians, we believe that though we live in a Good Friday world, Easter uh, Sunday is coming. We believe that on the other side of crucifixion is resurrection. But there is no resurrection without crucifixion, no Easter without Good Friday. There is no path to the crown of God's glory except the way of the cross. One other quote always grabs my attention when Jesus tells Mary, 
Don't hold on to me, but go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary's Lord had risen indeed, but she could not cling to him as she had during his earthly ministry. Those days were gone. She would have to learn to relate to him in a new way. These past years of COVID had take, have taken away so many of the things we took for granted. Being able to gather safely, being able to have coffee hour and community meals. We wanted to cling to these things, and some churches did to their sorrow as their members began to fall ill and in some cases die. But we've had to learn to experience, to have had to learn to worship our Lord in new ways, to proclaim the same message using new tools. And now we're able to gather once again, though there's still a degree of tentativeness and trepidation. Gone are the days of taking for granted that we can safely gather any time we want. But even though our churches have struggled these past years, I think our faith has strengthened. The risen Christ has not covered us in bubble wrap and protected us from all harm, but he has walked with us through the valley of the shadow. Whom do you seek? If we seek a God that will cosset us and indulge our every wish, we will be sorely disappointed and may come to say, they have taken away my Lord. But if we can bring ourselves to stop clinging to those places Christ has met us in the past and follow where he leads in the present, we can be assured that we will never walk alone. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth in this place to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in this place to love and serve all to whom God has called us in service. Go forth in the hope of the resurrection. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us and go with us each one now and evermore. Amen. Uh, halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. 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 Our, may we sing our final hymn, number 242. The strife is o'er, the battle done. Uh, we will sing the first two verses. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The strife is o'er, the battle done. The victory of life is won. The song of triumph has begun. Hallelujah! The powers of death have done their worst, but Christ their legions hath dispersed. Let shouts of holy joy outburst. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace.